Hello, and welcome to the Darby Creek Diaries. I'm Gail Thompson, and I'm back from vacation and some other things, and ready to do a couple of Halloween cards. I don't do many, but I really love Tim Holtz's colorized dies with Sizzix, and I thought I would show you how to make a peekaboo card. And it is super easy, not as many pieces as the other colorized. So let's get started. First, I could have used other things, but I wound up with Distress Glitter and some clear uh, stencil paste from Lawn Fawn. I found out later I have glitter stencil paste, but hey, I, what, it's behind a bunch of stuff. I have a, too much stuff. Anyway, if you look at my knife, you will see that there's already glitter on it. And that is because you have to race to the sink or have a thing of water next to you. Or I'm, I'm telling you, it dries. When you want things to dry, dry quick, they don't. And then when you don't, man, it's instant. But it's just a plastic knife, so I don't really care. And black glitter, for some reasons, is my nemesis. But I've got my stencil ready, and we're just going to be careful because this is kind of a fine uh, line stencil, and you don't want to press on it too much and bend it. And I'm just smoothing it on just like butter on toast. Certainly no technique here, and I'm just holding it on. Um, because it doesn't really matter if it's kind of goofy looking, you know, not perfect. It's already a not perfect stencil, so it doesn't matter. And I'm scraping off the excess, and I'm doing the first side and then the second side of the front of my card. And this is going to be a trifold card or a gatefold. I guess people call them gatefolds. And I'm just smoothing out the rest of the paste and trying to make sure that I don't have you know too bloppy and now you can see this is wet but it will dry clear now here is Edison the colorized dye he's new this year and he doesn't have a million pieces those there are colorized if you check my playlist that have a million pieces my the band thing was one of them and those are fun, but they aren't very quick. I don't know what was going on with my glue, but it got super runny. I don't get to my craft room very often. And I think I just, some little little uh, ghouls or something go down there and mess with my stuff. It's kind of like you put away lights at Christmas and they work. And then when you bring them out the next Christmas and you've not touched them and they don't work. So I'm dabbing up, this glue dries clear and matte, so I'm just dabbing up the excess that's squeezed out. It's a, it's a nice fine tip bottle by Gina K. And I'll have the things listed below uh, that I use. And I am taking my tweezers and I'm making the, the little, uh, oh, this, it's not the stump. You know, it's the vine thing It's on the top. Why can't I think of the name of that? Now, this is from uh, when I was playing around last year. It's a scrap using my Halloween, the Tim Holtz, uh, the uh, mica sprays. I love those mica sprays, and I collected, I think, all but two of them. I bought one as an individual. I should have just bought the set. Anyway, I love playing with those, although they are smidge messy. I have stacked a couple of black ones because I wanted this pumpkin to have quite a bit of um, sturdiness to him. And then I made my front. All I did, I did, this is just a little sample, to make the card a four and a quarter by five and a half. You're just going to crease it at two and an eighth inches on both sides, and that will give it to you. And then I took the dies, and well, the one, the main die, and just cut it in half. But I'm going to show you. I just wanted to show you my template, 
that I made because I don't like to plan out stuff. But in this case, it needed to be, you know, I wanted it centered correctly. So I have a little bit of extra. I didn't get it lined up perfectly. So just cut the back of, just cut the black. It's off screen, but all I'm doing is just getting in behind that front and cutting out the black. And I'm so sorry, I had to reach pretty far out to stay under my camera, which is fixed. I need to move my table, but I didn't know that at the time. So I just snip off the back and I, I'm a little fussy about it, but it, as long as you can't see it, it doesn't matter if you rip it off the back or anything like that. Now we're going to glue on all the little pieces. While I'm doing that, I just wanted to ask a favor of you. If you are enjoying this, could you please like and subscribe and share with your friends? It doesn't cost a thing and it does wonders for my channel and I appreciate it so much if you would do that. And if there's anything that you um, think you might need, I will have everything linked below. And those are affiliate links. And you may not realize this, but uh, anyone that's on YouTube that you, if you use, if click on those links and you actually purchase the item, we get a little commission from it and every little bit helps. I buy my own supplies. I don't have sponsors. And so it's a great help. Now I'm getting out my walnut stain here and I am just gonna get as much on as I can to make it look a little worn. I just thought it looked too plain. And then I decided I wanted to have a little bit of depth there, a little bit of a shadow. So I am showing you something. Oh, I accidentally uh, put the glue on this one with the slits and I should have put it on the I put it on the one without the slits, and I should have put it on the slits. And that magnetic bowl is awesome, by the way. It keeps those little pieces. Now it's time to score the the cardstock. The back of that is the one that I did the glitter paste on. So at two and an eighth inches, I am trying to stay. It's this black cardstock is Hero Arch Pitch Black, and it is the thickest cardstock. It is wonderful for card bases, but it is super thick, and so it takes a little doing to score it, but it is worth it, I promise. And that is just a little, I got myself a little uh, Dress My Craft scoring board so that I didn't have to get that huge one out that I have been using. Now I'm just going to take the template I made earlier and put, place that on the front of the card. It just slides in like a puzzle piece and just use a little bit of that um, see-through tape. It could be any tape. It uh, isn't going to touch the card anyway. And you can use that over and over. And then just, I'm going to pull it off and then I'm going to plunk it on to the other side making sure that nothing has shifted uh, the black underneath because I didn't attach it and then I'm just going to snuggle it in there and take this over to the die cutter and there we have our cutouts easy peasy lemon squeezy now the back of this card could be covered if you want, because it'll have that a little bit of the, uh, oh, shall we say, web on the back, and some will be blank. I don't mind it, but you could always cover that with a piece of, another piece of cardstock, and that would also be a good place to write any messages that you would have. I'm taking my Teflon bone folder and scoring this now really sharply. Teflon bone folders don't leave the uh, shiny marks that other ones do. I'm sorry, some of this is off screen. I'm just basically matching everything up, making sure that it meets. And it looks like it's meeting pretty good. 
Now I'm going to put in the background, which is also Halloween spray stains. I think those were from the year before last, I want to say. I don't think these are last year's. They're from the original set, whenever that is. I'll have it below. And I'm getting Edison in there, positioning him to make sure that it can open and close freely. So I may have to make a few little adjustments. But I think it's pretty good. Now it's time to glue the background piece in. And I'm going to use this glue again, but I'm going to try to not go clear the edges so things don't ooze out. I think I'm a little over generous with the glue, but it's super runny. I always stand my cards up when I'm doing something that's the same height as the background. That way you're sure it's level at the bottom. And I just press it in there. Now we're going to put an action wobbler on the back. I just thought that that would give Edison a little more personality and just make the card a little more fun and special. So I'm still, you know, looking at my gatefold there, making sure everything is good. And now I'm going to add some I had some glittery bats and things left over from a card using uh, Toil and Trouble from uh, last year's or the year before, as I don't remember, uh, Tim Holt Sizzix. I had, I made them with, I put glitter on them using that black glitter. And I thought I would just add a few. They would be kind of discreet, but just a little accent to the front of the card because I just really didn't feel like it it popped enough. Now it's time to add Edison back in. I think that makes it kind of cute. There's just not a lot of room on the front of that card to do much. Certainly not enough room for a sentiment. Now I'm peeling the release paper off of Edison and and I'm just going to plunk him in, trying to center him as best I can in the cutout area. And then pressing on him and opening up the, the gate folds. Make sure everything is good and it looks good. And he's a jiggling and a wiggling. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to work out okay. Next, I'm taking the varsity letters from Tim Holtz and Sizzix, and just there really isn't room for much of a sentiment, so I want to keep it hidden. So I thought, oh, let's just use some more of that uh, scrap that I had with the, I believe that's flickering flame, and then jack o' lantern mica sprays. And I'm just going to jumble up the word boo. The one way to make sure, if, if you can't get something perfectly straight or you don't want to go to the trouble, then make it all crooked on purpose. So that's what I do. And I'm just gluing all of these down. And I'm going to spare you gluing every single one down. I die cut it twice, once out of the scrap and then once out of a black scrap so that it would pop up better. And boy, is it fun getting that, what would be the tilde. Um, not a tilde. I take that back. It's the uh, tittle. A tilde is the Spanish thing that goes over an end. Anyway, I'm just putting the outline on now. And like I said, poof. All I'm going to do is finish up the inside of the B and we'll have the letters done. And here is our finished project. I got the last two little bits in and now Edison is all happy and smiling and shiny and the boo matches the, his interior which is pretending to be lit up. And we've got the outside fitting around with the bats 
And there is our card. I hope you enjoyed this, that you'll give it a try, ask me any questions that you want, and that you'll like, subscribe, come back and see me, comment, tell your friends, and enjoy crafting. You have a fabulous day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.